What is the significance of breaking of bread? Well, you know, it's an ordinance. An ordinance is just a religious practice. It's not a sacrament. So it's an ordinance and not a sacrament. What do I mean by that? That it has no power at all to remove sin. It doesn't add to your salvation. It's not something that you do that you, um, you know, become more pleasing to God or God's going to love you more because you're doing this. No, it's just something that we, we do that symbolizes something else. And what does it symbolize? Well, if we go to uh, John 6, chapter 53, we see what exactly it is symbolizing and why I believe that Jesus even did this at the Last Supper with his disciples. Uh, verse 53, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead, he that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Uh, these things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying, who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What, and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now the Catholics love uh, John 6 because they say, oh, you know, this is why it's, we believe in transubstantiation, where the, the, the bread and the, and the juice and the wine actually turn into the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ. But is that what Jesus is teaching here? You know, he does say that he, you have to eat uh, the flesh of the Son of Man, you have to drink his blood, but then he clarifies here in verse 63, he says, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And this is what we can refer back to when we go back up to 53, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. So you see how the flesh doesn't profit you uh, spiritually. It's the Word of God. So it's symbolic of you know, believing on Jesus Christ and partaking of His flesh and His blood spiritually that gives us spiritual life. It's the Word of God that we have to believe. And this is what the breaking of bread and you know, the drinking of wine represents. It represents the fact that those of us who have believed on Jesus Christ have spiritually partaken of His body and spiritually partaken of his flesh. Now what are some other misconceptions about breaking of bread, uh, what we commonly know, know as uh, the Lord's Supper? Let's just go to Luke 24. I'll just go back to 1 Corinthians actually. What else is the significance of breaking of bread? Well another significance is, and we see here in verse 24, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. So not only does it symbolize spiritually partaking of uh, Christ's body and his blood, but it's also a time where we remember what Jesus Christ did for us. Right? He said, Do this in remembrance of me, and then we drink the cup, and he said again, this do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And I think it's interesting in Luke 24, I just want to show you this verse real quick. But after Jesus had risen from the dead, and he showed himself to his disciples, I don't know if you remember this story in Luke 24, but he appears to his disciples, and his disciples say, oh, haven't you heard what's happened? You know, this man Jesus died, and this is the third day when he was meant to rise again, and basically talking to Jesus about what Jesus had just done, not realizing that they were talking to him. And in verse 30, it says here, And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them. So again, even, you know, we're not going to turn there now, but in the Gospels you can go read, Jesus was already eating with them when he broke bread, and that's why I wanted to do it tonight, you know, after we've eaten, um, 
to, to break bread together. And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. So this is one reason why I don't believe we ought to celebrate the breaking of bread only once a year because Jesus didn't do it only once a year. They broke bread from house to house. Now, how many times we do it? You know, I think that's just the liberty we have to decide, you know, when we do it, how often we do it. I guess it's just up to me in this church, right? How often we're going to do it. I don't think it's good to do it too often because you don't want it to turn into some meaningless ritual. I think that, that spreading it out sometimes helps. Um, but I don't have a hard and fast rule of when to do it. But I don't think some people believe that the breaking of bread and the Lord's Supper is the replacement of the Passover. But I don't think that's the case because th that's not what we see the disciples doing. We see them through the New Testament breaking bread from house to house. So they're obviously continuing this breaking of bread together to remember what Jesus has done. He says, and, there, he, he, and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. And their eyes were open. And they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they, re they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven gathered together, and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen, and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way, and how he was known of, known of them in breaking of bread. So there is this spiritual significance here as we break bread and we partake of the cup that we remember the Lord Jesus Christ and we remember what he's done for us. Yeah, if somebody can clean that up, that'd be good. All right, what's the last significance of, of um, the breaking of bread? Well, let's just go back to 1 Corinthians 11. First Corinthians 11 verse 26, he says here, For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. And I just want to show you an interesting verse as well that came to mind. So what's another significance of breaking of bread? Well, another significance is that it's a, it's a public testimony, isn't it? It's a public testimony not only to unbelievers that may be part of the congregation at that time, but to the world as well, that we have this ordinance that Christ has given us to show that he has indeed died for our sins. And it's because, you know, where else does this ordinance come from? The fact that Christ instituted it, it's like with baptism. It's like Christ and John the Baptist have instituted this, Christ was baptized, and then you've got to ask the question, well, where do these ordinances even come from? And we see in the Bible, this is, these, this is where the ordinance comes from. And it shows the world, it shows the Lord's death till he come. Because it's reminding not only us, but it's showing the world that Jesus Christ has died for us. And that's why we do uh, this practice. That can be another significance. But look at what it says here in Joshua 4 verse 5. It says, And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan, and take ye up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that, that, that this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Then ye shall answer them, that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, when it passed over Jordan. The waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever." So when they passed over the Jordan River, they set up these stones as a memorial. And, you know, I don't think, I'm just drawing the parallel there that I think in the same way that they set these stones up as a memorial of something that God did for them, that's what Jesus did for us when he broke bread and he said, this do in remembrance of me. It was not only a memorial to us as believers, it wasn't just a memorial to the world showing that Christ has broken his body and shed his blood for us. But also it's for our children, isn't it? And so our children will come in time to pass. They'll ask, what mean you by this ordinance? And we can explain to them it's because Jesus Christ shed his blood and he broke his body for us. And that's why uh, we do this.